You're listening to the All Day Ruck Off Podcast, episode number 103. Welcome to the All Day Ruck Off Podcast, episode number 103. This is your host, Brian, and I wanted to thank you so much for tuning in. The All Day Ruck Off podcast focuses on the GRT and rucking community and includes interviews, motivation, and advice to keep you informed and get you ready for your next event. In this episode, we have an interview with Mark Jones and Mike Durkin, who you might recall recently finished Go Ruck Team Assessment Class 000. Not only did they finish the event, they were the first to finish, which makes them the 2019 team assessment champions. I'm really excited to have them on for this interview. We talk about why they signed up for the event, training up for the event, what they liked, disliked about the event, and get a little bit into their history with these kind of big endurance events. It was a ton of fun talking with them. And if you are even remotely interested in team assessment or those longer endurance events, I am sure you're going to enjoy this interview. Thank you so much for all of the support, and here's the interview with Mark and Mike. Today, I'm talking with Mark Jones and Mike Durkin. I'm really excited to have them on this call. They both recently completed GORUCK team assessment. They were the class 000 champions, or so it's called, and I'm really excited they're taking the time to talk with me. Guys, thank you again. Mike, how are you doing today? Doing real well, thank you. And Mark? Oh, I'm just teaching. Sounds like it. You're on quite the adventure, I believe. <laughs> oh, it's been an adventure since Monday, so yeah. Go, go, go. In this life. So, go work team assessment. I watched the interview with you two and Jason, and it sounds like Mark came up with the idea to do this event and decided to call Mike. So, Mark, what about this event drew you to it, and why did you want to sign up? So one of the things that drew you to this event, Mark, was that it was the beta class 000. You mentioned that you like kind of paving the way. So that was one of the factors. Yeah, I think everybody likes uh, going on the ride first, you know, when it opens. So uh, and sitting in the front row. So that's kind of my analogy for it. Like being the first on a new, brand new roller coaster, uh, sitting in the front row, you know, for the first time. You would think that a lot of people would want to be first on the roller coaster to sit in front, but based on the event, only six teams showed up to do that. Yeah, and uh, you know, you hate to like call people out and why they did that because who who ultimately knows, right? Things happen and people don't show, and you know. But it was it was quite shocking, I think, for all of us who were there, or at least for uh, you know us and uh, Team One that you know because we we made predictions. And I think it was like 22 teams were signed up. We thought at least 15 would show up, and then, you know, five would kind of battle it. So, uh, yeah, those numbers are way off. Yeah, unfortunately. So, Mike, you got the call from Mark about this event. How much information did he tell you about team assessment before you said, I'm in? We didn't talk for about a week after that. Uh, the first message came over Facebook Messenger. Um, he pretty much just told me it was a, a new go ruck event. It was 48 hours and it was going to be similar to selection. And, uh, I pretty much said I was it. I was looking for an event to do and it kind of fit the, uh, fit the timeline and fit the duration that I was looking for. So, uh, 
I just jumped in with both feet. And it sounds like you've done a couple events in the past that have been an extended duration. When a lot of people look at a 48 hour event, they think, man, that's, you know, the, the longest thing that I've ever done. But your event history, I guess, you've done a number of events that have been of a substantial length. Um, yeah, I like doing, uh, like multi-day events, um, like, you know, days where you, you know, do events and you camp overnight in the mountains and you keep going the next day, like stage type events. I like anything that's anything over 12 hours interests me. So the longer and the heavier, the better. So then 48 hours and lots and lots of weight, which is what team assessment ended up being. It seems like it was right up your alley. Yeah. It's, uh, if I could have handpicked what we were doing, that would have pretty much been it. It kind of fit right in my wheelhouse and, uh, all the things I enjoy doing. That's perfect. So did Mark reach out to you pretty close to when the event was announced or was it, how much time, I guess, did you have to, to train up for this? Oh, so it's my understanding that the, uh, I think the email came out that day and Mark messaged me that evening because, uh, I think the story Mark was alluding to was one of my buddies at the gym. He also got the email. He asked me the next day at the gym if I wanted to do it, but I had, uh, I had already committed to Mark. So uh, that's, the route. that's the direction I went. And I just got to say that, I mean, we've never met in person, but that kind of a story I think is telling of, of character because this is a, a team event, right? And so training together, I would imagine would be beneficial. And for you to stick it out with Mark, who is states apart from you, instead of, you know, saying, you know, Mark, um, something else came up and I've got this opportunity to train with someone right next door. I mean, I think that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Once I committed, there's no way I was backing out. I hope they like me better. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's gym buddy, so I could say that uh, pretty confidently. So he'll probably uh, send me a message after this comes out and say that's not true. But, but I mean, the, the proofs in the videos, right? It was you two out there. So Mark, I'm going to start with you on this one. I'm curious about your base level of fitness before you started training up for selection. What kind of shape were you in? What kind of events do you think you could have accomplished with your with that level of fitness? Like you I'm sure you didn't go couch to team assessment. Right, no. Uh, so pretty quickly, you know, we we both done a number of events uh crazy, you know, all the day stage, whatever, uh, throughout the years. But uh, when I asked Mike, I was in a period of transition from obstacle course racing in which I was doing a lot of the, the uh, toughest butters and really just going out for, you know, some prize money and just come up uh, the uh, World Toughest Mudder team event and uh, just really kind of dedicated that because, you know, they threw a check out there. Well, those checks went sour and people weren't getting paid and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, it just kind of, it, it drove me in a direction of kind of hating the industry instead of embracing it like I, I was so passionate about when I first started, all because I wasn't getting a paycheck that I earned. So, you know, I I kind of like just branched away from that and really it was like spending every moment watching the selection uh, last year when Doug was going through and it pumped me up. It, got my I got my heart back essentially and my passion for what I wanted to do because it's not it doesn't need to be about check it doesn't be it doesn't need to be about anything it's just where does your where does your love go so anyway uh, you know long story short it was back in uh, I want to say like a, like a couple of days after that I threw on a 45 pound rock and I just did a half marathon that I was supposed to pay the marathon for uh, but they didn't need me, so I threw on a rock and ran the half just to see what I had. And I, it was like, it's like a little kid jumping in a puddle for the first time all over again. And I was like, I want to rock this year. So <laughs> I, uh, I started training like immediately after that. Uh, and then, you know, coincidentally, like that, that's when I started training for selection was when selection ended. So I already had a good baseline, but it wasn't, it wasn't uh, rock. Baseline. It was more endurance, OCR baseline. So when uh, that email came up, it just it was all complimentary. It was you know going to be complimentary to uh, what's coming up later that I've been training for, which will 
be about a year when it does rot. So uh, I would say my baseline was pretty good, uh, but it wasn't as good as when I, I started training with Mike and we start bouncing ideas back and forth. And Mike, same question to you. What was your base, you know, training? Your, I guess your your base fitness level like when you started training for team assessment. Uh, the last event I did before uh, I really started focusing on team assessment was a 36 hour triathlon relay with a couple buddies. So I was in very good cardio shape, but uh, it wasn't so. It was the strength endurance wasn't where it needed to be. So I had about a month before like the initial conversation with Mark to where I really started focusing strictly on team assessment to kind of build into it. Yeah. And that's, I mean, quite the transition, right? Because for triathlons, I mean, you want to be as lean and as quick as you can. And for team assessment, I mean, watching the videos, you want to carry as much heavy stuff as you can, as quick as you can. Yeah, it was, it was, it was a little bit of a change. I think over the, uh, the about six months I spent getting ready for team assessment, I put on about 10 pounds and most of it was in the upper body. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And it seems like it did your team well. So you two trained remote for this. You don't live near each other. I believe, if I recall correctly, Mark flew out to Mike's place and trained for a week there. I think, Mike, I think you brought him to your gym for some training. And so I guess we'll start this one on Mark. How was it training apart? Did you guys have any uh, tricks, any tips that you know, helped you come together. It sounds like you knew each other before this event, but, but still to get on the same page so that when you showed up at a team assessment, you felt like a team and not like two people just getting ready to do the event. Yeah. I, I don't want to say a lot of it was luck, but I think the dynamics we had were through individual personalities and maybe from just experience of events in the past, because Team assessment is definitely something that can bring about the ego and uh, you know, alpha personality, especially when they start pushing the competitive race scenario. And it's go, go, go instead of, hey, let's think this out, talk it through, communicate well, and you know, keep a routine. Uh, so, you know, Mike and I, we discussed initially, and I guess it was the communication throughout the whole process about. You know, initial discussion of how we're going to train, how we're going to go about business, are uh, are we training and communicating while we were there, uh, and then having the visual of, okay, this is what you're doing, this is what you've been doing, I can see this, this is where I need to adapt and, you know, work on a little bit more, and uh, then, you know, the final stage, of, you know, before the event, communicating what we've been doing, you know, we would do our PT, a full PT test on on a Saturday and then share data with each other. So as stupid as it sounds, it's like we were training together. We just weren't together. Uh, so. And I think a lot of that has to do with, with personality and, and how close you are. You know, you guys have known each other for, it sounds like years and years. This wasn't, uh, you know, Facebook looking for someone to do this event. It showed up. The first thing you thought to do, Mark, was send this off to Mike and say, hey, buddy, you want to do this with me? So it sounds like you had a, a big base there to work off of. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's crazy. We've known each other for years, but we've, honestly, we haven't known each other that well. So like actually having Mike embrace me with his whole family and spend time with him. And it, it really, really forced us to connect a lot more. And, uh, I, I just, I'm so lucky to, to have him as a friend and a teammate throughout that entire, you know, six months or whatever it's been since we first started. That's awesome. And I'm not sure if I should be asking this or not, but every single video that I've watched with you guys uh, related to team assessment says that you met at a endurance event back in 2013 or so. Can you spill? I mean, this isn't a GoRuck affiliated podcast or anything. Can you spill what that endurance event was that you guys met at? Yeah, sure. It was uh, it was an event put on by Joe Decker. Uh, it was called The Ultimate Suck. It was a... Uh, like a 36 hour endurance event that's kind of a cross between like, you know, like there's a lot of, uh, a lot of PT. There's a lot of like Atlas stones and other strongman type stuff. A lot of rucking, a lot of just wading through rivers and stuff like that. Sounds like quite the event. 
Oh, it's a blast. <laughs> so on to you, Mike. I mean, you had the opportunity to train with someone at your gym uh, for a team assessment, but you know, you ended up going with, which I mean, I think is like the right thing to do. You already committed to Mark for this event. So you're, you're training with him. You're doing this remote. Was there anything that you found super useful or any tips that you had besides having him come out that, that really helped you solidify your team cohesiveness? Uh, we just, just being honest with each other. I mean, we're both pretty dedicated people. Um, you know, we don't skip workouts. We, we both knew that about each other, but, uh, you know, there was no, you know, we would text our, you know, uh, Facebook message a couple times a week. We'd lay out what our workouts were, what our results from the last week were. And there was no, uh, you know, there was no BS around. It wasn't like, Oh, I, I know Mark's faster than I am. He's a much better runner. He's, he's quicker with white rucks than I am. It's not, that's not without question. But I never felt like I had to like fudge my times or anything like that. We were just very open and honest with each other. I'm like, you know, this is what I'm doing. I hope I'm trying to get faster to catch you. You know, I'm probably a little stronger than he is. And I know he was lifting a lot, but, you know, keep up with me with the hope that, you know, what he was good at wasn't what I was worst at. And then we were just bad at it as a team. So we were trying to balance each other out during the, uh, during the training process. And we were just real honest with each other. And that, that went a long way, I think. That's a great advice. And that's something, I don't know. I don't know if it was difficult in the past or not, but I feel like in this day and age with, you know, crazy social media, you see people doing the PT test, people doing these workouts and they have these amazing times, you know, the, the monthly rope workouts like Gorex got. And personally, I'm fast. I can run a fast mile. I can run a fast five miles, but I'm not good at pushups. And so whenever I post my pushups, I'm always slightly embarrassed and I can, you know, that split thought like, oh, maybe I should just retest this. But I think, you know, just being open and honest, I think that's crucial in team success. And I think that, you know, showed through with your team's performance. So one of the things that Gorak always harps on with these events is the why, you know, the why are you out there? Why are you doing this? And it's that thing that you're supposed to hold close to yourself and deep and when it everything really sucks at 36 hours in you know it's the reason why you don't quit looking in the wise it's always a tough one because you don't really know until you're there like how strong it is until you're in that position where you have the ability to quit um and so i was just curious if you guys wouldn't mind sharing your whys since we were just on you, Mike, if you want to share your why for this event and the thing that, you know, kept you going through it. Okay, sure. Um, well, mine was kind of a two part answer. Um, one of the reasons I wanted to do the event was I enjoyed the training. You know, I, I, I really do. It sounds a little ridiculous at times, but, uh, I do enjoy going to the gym. And when you, have, I believe that when you have an event or you have something you're training for, um, there's always more intensity there. So I always enjoyed that more. Um, but when the going gets tough, you do have to have a why during the event. And, you know, my first why for this event was I would never, I would never back out on my teammate. Um, you know, we set out early that we were going to do this together. And I would never let, put myself in a situation where I would have let my partner down. I mean, you could say that that's ego. You could say that that's, that's a lot of different things. But I never wanted to be the weak link on the team. Um, and I, 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 I know he felt the same. I would never have put him in a spot where he would have backed out on me and he never would have put me in a spot where I would have had a back out on him. We were in that through and through together. But, uh, besides this event, um, other events I've done in the past, you put so much time in the training that I just, you know, I don't want to waste that. You know, you spend so much, so much time away from your family, so much time away from your friends. I mean, some of these events, you know, people, they don't, you know, I didn't, I didn't drink beer or anything for a month and a half before the event. You know, some people give up caffeine. Some people make all these small little sacrifices. And at the end of the day, all those sacrifices are why you can't give up because you've already made them and you're not going to waste them because you have a weak moment. And that's how I always look at it. That's great. And that's the wife and kids are usually what I use for my why when I'm at events, because, you know, like you said, training for these, it takes a lot of time. I think from one of your previous interviews uh, with Gorak, you said that your longest week was over 30 hours worth of training. And I mean, that's a lot of time you're, not, you're spending away from your family, away from your kids. You're missing things. 
And I always tell myself, you know, when things are sucking, like, what does it say to them that I spent all this time away and then I quit? So I, I think that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. There's no way I would do that to them. I mean, all the time that they miss with me, you just can't do it. Right. And then focusing back over on you, Mark, if you want to share your, your why for being out there, the thing that, you know, you pulled that when it was 36, 38 hours in and sucking. Yeah. Yeah. I want to capitalize on Mike's uh, training philosophy is that, you know, I, I always tell people uh, the best part about an event is the training because it's like, it's like watching a Rocky movie, right? But being in it. So, you know, he's going to fight and win at the end, right? So you don't really watch it for the, uh, the fight. You, you watch for the montage, the training montage, right? That's where, that's where the movie makes its money. And, when I'm training and I'm out there and it's raining, it's cold or whatever, and you know, little kids are running around me and I'm dragging the sandbag or flipping the tire and they're looking at me like I'm crazy. Like that's the montage and the, the music's playing and I'm having fun and, and I I cannot tell you how much I've enjoyed this training. Like ever since this journey started, I have had so much fun that I haven't had in a long time for for training to this event and. You know, I've been driving on the road, going to Colorado the last three days, and I've you know, taken time off just packing up and everything. But I am, I am scanty to get back at it. It's going to be insane. But uh, uh, besides that, you know, I, I talked to Jason after the event, and we we're talking about why. And uh, you know, I, I told him the big picture, and it's kind of always been, you know, a dedication of. You know, a, a, kind of scaled that back and you know it goes back with the with the universe and putting energy into different you know numerous numerous areas well you gotta hone in on one specific you know maybe two more the more energy you can put into one specific why the more empowering you can make you so uh and, you know mike knows this and they asked us out there and it's, ever since i asked him my why has always been mike because we'll say same thing you were talking about, not giving up on them. And, you know, yeah, I'm faster, but that means nothing in this event. It's about being strong. So I took my weakness of strength and really worked on it. Uh, so I wasn't, I wasn't, you know, I'm still weaker than Mike, but I, it was empowering to throw a 120 pound scan bag with your 55 pound rough and then carry another 40 in front, you know, for the first event. It's kind of set the bar of, all right. I, my training has, has freaking is good. My training is good, and my why is set, and I'm moving forward, and we're going to get this done. You know, like right from the start of that sandbag workout that we did, I, I think we both just knew like, this is going to go well. That's always a good feeling when you show up to something, especially like, like this, where it's a lot of unknowns. I mean, there's a, some assumptions you can make based on the location of the event. And the fact that Gorak sells sandbags and backpacks, but showing up, getting into that first event and getting that feeling, because when you do these kind of events, I mean, it's, it's really showing off all of your training, all of your training should be, I mean, the events are really hard, but it's really just showing off all the hard work you put in. So that good feeling, I mean, that must've felt amazing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I guess I would say I was the smallest guy out there. So yeah, it was, it was good to know. So now that you've finished team assessment and you've gone through, you know, all the stages, all the gates, Mark, this one's for you first. Is there anything that you would have done differently in your training? Anything where you got out there and you you thought, oh man, you know, I, if only I had done this instead, this part would have been a little bit easier, or I wish I had focused a little bit more on, on something else. Yep. And we knew it right away. goes back to you know the OCR. Like I had incredible grip strength uh, during you know training specifically for us. And I think it went along with my hatred and uh, disappointment in the companies that I was competing for and paying money into to do their events that I kind of lost focus on um, a lot of the grip stuff and focus more on sandbags and weight. So going you know, moving forward, that like grip is definitely going to be intensified. Uh, along with uh, certain animal movements, uh, that will definitely be a forward. 
And then the same question to you, Mike, is there something that you had, you know, after completing the event that you, you wish you had done slightly differently or completely differently even with your training uh, to prepare for the event? Um, I would have done more grip strength work. I wish I would have did more heavy carries. I did a lot of uh, like lighter carries and like deadlift type stuff. And I thought that was going to be good enough. But uh, we carried a, a lot of weight for a lot of miles on our hands. So I wish I would have did a little more grip strength work. Yeah. And that's something that I definitely don't focus on a lot. And I've actually noticed it quite a bit with all of the, uh, you know, the carries that we've had to do for the Gorak monthly challenges. I'm like, oh, I should probably focus on some grip strength because you, you don't really notice it until the events. Yeah. One of the things that made it a little challenging was, uh, we weren't just carrying like our rucks or sandbags. We were carrying, um, those pipes. And it was a very awkward size. It wasn't like anything I'd carried before. So the grip on just, just carrying the pipe was a little difficult. So I would have varied my grip strength training too. Yeah, the apparatus. Yeah. That, that special thing that they had you construct. The, the special thing wasn't that bad. It was more the litter carries um, during the middle of the night that was a little more challenging. We were limited by how far we could. I mean, the, uh, we were more limited by our grip strength on that event, I think. Got it. It was interesting uh, watching the apparatus at team assessment and then what was it one week later at the rogue invitational they had a similar apparatus except theirs actually looked like it cost money and wasn't made of spare parts (laughs) from someone's backyard so i don't i don't know if either of you caught that but i was i was chuckling yeah yeah i was able to catch part of it It was cool definitely a little more fun yeah yeah that was a you guys got the budget version, the trial run, if you will. <laughs> so for for me, one of the biggest surprises watching team assessment from home was that there was only six teams that showed up. I'm used to the live feeds just packed with people for selection. And so that was personally a big shock. I'm curious what I mean, that can be the big surprise for you guys. I don't want to, but I don't want to put words in your mouth, but is there something at the event that was maybe the biggest surprise for you or a couple of things that, that really surprised you during the course of this? And we can start with Mark on this one. I, I guess the shock value of the, uh, the amount of teams that was there and then, you know, like six teams showed up, you, you just look at it, cut it in half, and there's three that make it, that go through or go the distance, but you know, to have two, like, right at the side, yeah, that was very shocking. And, uh, you know, as, as Mike said, I think it was, there goes our ground cover. Uh, but, you know, it, it was it was that, and then the transition after the uh, the first day into, like, more efficient scenario, that, that was not expected. So uh, those two things combined, it was interesting. Yeah, it's really tough out there with two teams, I'd imagine. And I've actually, I've already talked to uh, Vreeland a bit, and he was saying that it, it went from the idea that when you do these events, there's going to be first, you know, a team in first place, second, third, down the line, it turned into there was a winning team and a losing team. And it was uh, kind of a different animal. Yeah. And then I guess moving the question over to you, Mike, was there anything that really shocked you, surprised you at team assessment? Yeah, I was surprised by how... Uh... I guess, nice and motivational, the cadre were. I was expecting a little more of a, a selection feel where you were not encouraged as much, just flat out told the truth that you were kind of sucking in the moment. And uh, after the welcome party time, we really didn't get any of that. And that, that, was, that I found very surprising. Yeah, it was interesting watching. I almost wondered if, um, you know, the cadre had money on this or something because, you know, they, they were surprisingly motivating. They're like, look, they're not, they're not that far away. Like you can just push, push harder. You'll catch them. And, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was definitely surprising to me on that end as well. And then I guess just a general question. Did they tell you in advance how many people were registered for this event? Um, they had listed on the Facebook page that there was 43 people Okay, and there was a lot of jokes about it that like, how do you have 43 people, which is an odd number for a team event. So we knew how many were registered, but that's that's a good question. How you gonna have forty three people, and with only six teams showing up? I mean, if the cadre hadn't been there early, like I would have thought I was at the wrong start point. That's a small percentage. 
yeah, it was it was pretty shocking. Um, but you know, it's what it is. And and I I'm actually curious. Not that it matters, but I'm kind of curious, you know, why people didn't show up or who actually signed up, and you know what what the outcome of this is. You know, us kind of setting the uh, the bar for next year. How many teams are now kind of, or how many future teams are kind of relieved as to, oh, okay, you know, this this isn't as bad as we thought. It's not a selection. We can get a team and get out there. I I'm really curious about next year how many teams will will show up or sign up and show up. I think it's pretty high. Yeah, I'm I'm hoping it's high too. I think you know a lot of the I know the cadre and I know Jason said it's team assessment. It's not selection when they were leading up to the event. But all the telling signs on the website, a lot of the pictures for team assessment looked like selection. If you dro- hovered over on their menu bar, team assessment was embedded under selection. And so they, they, weren't, they weren't doing much to, uh, to differentiate the events in terms of what you might expect. Because on, honestly, going in, I expected, I think a little bit of what you expected, Mike, was you know, cadre yelling, it, the whole selection vibe and attitude, except set gates. So I think after all the live coverage, I think you're right, Mark. I think that there's going to be a lot more teams there next year. At least I hope there are. I hope so too. It's a great gateway. You know, if, and again, like it's not selection at all, but I think it's a great gateway and like medium point for anybody thinking about it because, you know, you have the, you have the time, you have the distance, you have the weight, you know, so it's, it's kind of the step towards that without getting into it 100%. Right. And if you're setting your why as your teammate, I mean, you've got them right there looking you in the eyes. If you quit, then this person right next to you can't go on. And that's, you know, a, a lot more difficult than not having that, you know, that, that same direct impact with your why. On quitting, right. so I th- I just gotta say I think the way that you guys did it with with each other that's I, mean, I think that's probably the the perfect way of doing it. So going throughout the event, I mean it was a, a heavy heavy event, and it sounds like both of you trained for a heavy style event. Was there any workouts, any I guess evolutions of it, any gates where you guys got to they they said this is what you'll be doing, and you just thought yes. This is what we train for. And this is going to be fun. Starting with you, Mark. <laughs> I mean, I think it was fun because there's challenge and, and, and creativity that w- was allowed. You know, like, if it was a challenge, you know, it's, it's like it's like when you tell someone to do 100 reps or something, that number is astronomical to a lot of people. But if you're like, well, if you just break it down and do like two sets of 10 or, you know, something smaller. They're like, oh, yeah, that's doable. So every event was like, you know, that initial shock value, but not something we didn't train for. So it's like, this is doable, but this is how we're going to do it. And it just, it was like natural. Sometimes we didn't even talk about how we're going to do it. It just, it just happened, whether it was like 20 steps or, you know, we alternate here, we go to that tree. Um, but like, again, for me, I think, I think everybody can agree when you get past the mandatory PT standards. It's just a big relief off your chest. It's like, okay, the rest is on me. You know what I mean? So um, it's, I, I don't know, it's always PT stuff. Just get that out of the way. And the rest, you just go. Yeah, and I'd imagine that there's a lot of nerves at the PT test, you know. It's it's not like doing the push-ups, the sit-ups in your garage and then going for a run around your neighborhood and then, you know, a, a rock on a 12-mile course that you've done every week leading up to the event uh, i think there's a there's a lot going on during that pt test that i probably makes you pretty excited to be done with it yeah and that grass is so high we had you you'd go down for a push-up and you'd get like a mouthful of grass and it would hit you in the eyes you, like i was just closing my eyes doing push-ups and there were you know i would get no reps and i'm like what the hell <laughs> i bang my chest off the ground and it just goes to show like we were knocking out you know, like our, our, we pretty much had it. We were, we're knocking out push ups and sit ups in our minute, like the standards in our minute when we were training individually. So we knew that we had a minute of play time. So that's, that's how we went about it. For, for anybody that's still out there failing push ups and sit ups, like 
that's how we did it. So, because uh, you know, you have the whole ruck, you got pack on pack, pack on pack, and that's a lot of nerves and you know, like fast push muscles that are, that are activating. And you know, it's stupid, but you you feel a little sore after doing that. So get that done. Go sit, rest, and think about the next evolution because that impact you know, your, your standards for the uh, for the PT. It's probably a solid way to train, right? Just pretend you have a minute to do it instead of two. Try and get the numbers in. Pretty much, like I'd say, a minute, you know, uh, minute fifteen, we're we're basically there. That's solid. And then kicking over to you, Mike. Same question that that was just posed to Mark. Was there anything that was like, yes? I mean, it sounds like that sandbags at the beginning were definitely, uh, you know, this this is what we trained for a moment. But uh, was there anything else throughout it where you're like, this is this is it? You know, there, there really wasn't. I mean, I tried to, when I do an event like that, I just try to stay real even keel and just real accepting. You know, whatever they say to do, it's their 48 hours. That's how I look at it. So, I mean, it doesn't matter what I want to do. I'm just, every evolution, I'm like, yes, we got another one. We just mm-hmm. chopped up, we just chopped off another hour. Um, how they fill it, I, I really don't care at that point. I just want to fill it and get it done with. And that's probably a, a really good way to look at it too, because at that point, right, if you show up, you, you know, they say, this is what you're doing. You're like, yes, this is what I trained for. I mean, they could easily just flip the script right away. Like, you know, you're, you're going to be carting these sandbags over here. You're like, yes, I trained a lot for sandbags. Like, oh, and you're going to be doing it, you know, as a crab walk or as a bear crawl. Like, ah, oh. like it just, you know, takes the wind out of your sails. So to be focusing on just completing the evolutions, no matter what they are, I can see that as a, a solid mental trick for a, a longer event like this. Nice and steady. That's how I like to do it. <sighs> That's awesome. Do you have any other mental tricks? I mean, you've done a, a substantial number of longer endurance events. It sounds like that's, you know, your, your bread and butter, so to speak. Anything else that you do to, you know, stay, stay present, stay in it and uh, succeed? Um, I just accept the fact that there's gonna it's gonna be a roller coaster at times. I mean, you're gonna have emotional highs and emotional lows. You're gonna have physical highs and physical lows. Um, you just have to embrace them. I mean, you're gonna, you know, if you if you rate how you're feeling, how they always tell you, you know, how are you feeling, one to ten, you know, you're gonna have your your moments where you're a seven. You're gonna have your moments where you're a two. Um, don't fret them. Don't get overexcited when you feel good, and don't be too hard on yourself when you feel bad. You just have to accept that. You know, you're going to complete this event, you put the work in and just keep plotting forward and just never let, never let how you feel actually dictate anything other than like, ow, that hurts. Just put it out of your mind and keep moving forward. That is solid advice because I mean, when you get excited, if you let that get to you too much, I mean, it just, it gives you a bigger high and you know, it's just a longer drop into the low and it will, it'll make it feel that much worse. So I think staying even that's. That's phenomenal advice. Thank you. And then back back to you, Mark. Uh, do you have any tricks, any tips? You've done the longer events too. I mean, it sounds like you've done, would you say, world's toughest leading up to this? I mean, you've got a, a huge experience with those kind of events where it's just you got to grind it out. Um, anything that you do to uh, help you with that? Well, again, you know, this event, there's your partner that's right in front of you. So I, I, I know at a point where I was in pain carrying a freaking PVC pipe. I had Mike in front of me, and I just knew like I had to carry this end because he's in front of me leading the way. So that was the most painful experience I had in the event. So it was easy because you know, he was there, and I was looking at him. I was just looking in the blank space ahead of me. My partner was in front of me when I was paying to doing the same thing. So it was just a constant reminder. Um, you know, but with solo events moving forward, uh, I, and that's still – you know, there's always there's all kinds of little battles you have and things that come up and feelings of not being good enough for the world and then it, you know it trickles the spider web into the, all these other personal issues that you have going on in your life and and I've learned that just needs to be shut down, uh, especially through this experience because uh, knowing as soon as I got home I had to pack and uh, you know set up for the big move and transfer units and meet all these people and X, Y, and Z, and blah, 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 but none of that mattered, none of it. Uh, I was completely focused on the task at hand, which was team assessment, and just finishing that, 
And as soon as I was done, it was a relief because then I, I explored all those other options. But you just have to, you just have to focus 100% on what you want and not what's going to happen after or, you know, get sidelined basically. You just need to set the state and move forward towards, towards the path in hand. Great advice. Because there's, there's nothing you can do about that when you're out there in the event. So, you know, thinking about it isn't helping anyone. It's If anything, it's probably it's probably hurting you. Absolutely. You know, I, I, and I would be the first to say it's hurt me in the past. You know, and I've gone into some events where I've just, I've had a lot of personal baggage. And, you know, it was just, you can always say it's bad timing. Or it's never going to be good timing, right? And there's always something going on in somebody's life. But... If you could funnel in and hone in on what's the most important thing to you, and if, if it's not that event, then you shouldn't do that event. If you're injured and you're going to focus on an injury, you should not do that event. If you're going through a divorce or you know all these other things that are going to affect your event, you should not do the event. And I'll, I'll be the first to say that they're a failure in the past. Uh, but you know, in this event, stars aligned, and I was focused and driven, and felt really good. And uh, that's the I'm glad to hear it. I'm I'm glad that the stars aligned and everything was was perfect going in, and it sure seemed like it because your I mean your team crushed it out there. So uh, you alluded to this a little bit in what we were just talking about, but I'm I'm curious for both of you. We're gonna start with Mark, the absolute worst. I mean, we're past the event, right? So if you say what the worst thing in the event was, the cadre can't pop out of a bush and make you do it again. So. What was the worst part of the event for you? That freaking DVC fight. That was <laughs> horrible. That was that freaking, that hurt my arm so badly. I thought it was going to be like ripped off by the end of that. I don't know how it was, <laughs> it was the hell I was holding it or what. But, and it was funny because Mike, I think Mike's shoulder was my worst shoulder and vice versa. So whenever we switched, we were both in pain you know, in the same area, but just different sides. So. Uh, he was always antsy to get it off his shoulder, and I was always antsy to get mine because we had like, cross shoulders. But um, yeah, and, and there's just that mental where the hell are we going? How many loops are we doing? We, just, we didn't know. That was, was unknown pain, and that was the worst part of it for me. Yeah. I mean, I, I think you guys did over 30 laps. I mean, you did a lot of laps around that uh, that field. So it wasn't like. Oh, I wonder what we're going to see next mile. I mean, you know exactly what you're going to see next mile. It's going to be the same thing you saw last mile. That's got to right. play some mind games. Actually, like I, I love, I love loops. Anything. Like, I've done 24-hour races with you know one mile loops, one point seven mile loops, and I love that because then you become so familiar with the course that you start naming things. You have stop points. You have you know, it's just you become one with the with the event essentially and um i like doing that but it was just it was the unknown of how many loops we were going to do having that because we couldn't drop it so that maybe they might need to stay there and all we could do to alleviate the pain was switch shoulders and that was it you know <laughs> and that that just that took a toll and i think one more loop of that would have really hurt us pretty badly at least me so uh, i was glad we did what we did and and push, really push through a part of that race that I, you know, it started to trickle in a little bit. Like, hey, you know, what, what if I have to drop this and my shoulder is like really messed up right now? So, but it didn't get to that point. I'm glad it, I'm glad it didn't. <laughs> so is my concern. Yeah. So, yeah. And same question at you, Mike. The absolute worst part of the event. Um, I would agree with Mark that missile carry was horrible. Um. The other part of the event that I really didn't like was when we were doing the uh, 12 miles of hell or whatever they were calling it, the mile where we had to have the, our rucks overhead or we couldn't move forward. That was a bit of a pain. That's a tough one. Because that, that was the event, that was the mile where, like you said, you have to have your ruck extended overhead to make any forward progress at all, right? Yeah, if you didn't have your elbows locked out, I mean, you were walking with a cadre. So if you didn't have your elbows locked out, you couldn't move forward. So we were getting, I think we started out at maybe 20 paces. And by the end, we were getting 10 paces and we have to drop it and take a break. And then 10 paces and we have to drop it and take a break. It was just, it got a little monotonous. You're like, like I can see it right there, but we can't get there. That's tough. That's, that's tough. 
And I know, I mean, a lot of people have done who are listening have done Gorak events and the cadre sometimes do, you know, everyone has to extend lock overhead for a minute. You have to hold it and then you can move on. But I mean I can I'll rucking a mile with that overhead is a completely different ball game. So team assessment, it's a very different beast we've come to learn from selection. And I know there's only been one person in the you know history of selection who's come back and had done another one, and that was someone who took part in the beta there. Starting with Mark, do you have any interest in doing team assessment again, or is this more something where you know it came through, it's brand new, it's exciting, you had the goal to go out there and win it, and you did, and now it's kind of looking into the future for the next thing. Well, you know, I joked around about it right after uh, saying we got to defend our title next year. But I think, you know, moving past that, you look, I don't know, maybe five years down the road, get some other team to, to uh, earn that. And then maybe it's like a battle royale and all the teams come together as a reunion. And it's like, you know, let's really see who the best is. Maybe after like five or ten years or something. Or maybe I'm just too old by then. <laughs> I think we'll be 50. That's crazy. Uh, but yeah, I don't know, maybe down the road, but you kind of look at some of these long events because there's so many out there. And this is very unique and special, but there's, there's a lot of events out there, and, you know, it's just like, once you do it, you go back. I mean, how many people are really going to do to watch it again? You know, it's, this doesn't compare, but it's, it's one of those things, but who knows? Right. And when it's an event that you have to dedicate five, six months of your life training to, I mean, that's a, a lot of time dedicated to this you know, particular muscle group, muscle set that you need for this event. And you know, like you said, there's so many other long distance, long time frame events out there that look like a ton of fun, especially if this is something that you consider fun, uh, that it, it'd be tough to dedicate another whole season to uh the event again without something changing like you said like a championship of champions team assessment right we'll both be a masters by then too so maybe it's a different division there we go by then we'll have the, the you know the masters division yeah we can do that that's awesome and then you know same question over to you mike i mean it sounds like these events or things, you know, based on your interview with Jason at the end of the event, that's, you know, you get an, an itch to do one of these longer, these big events. Uh, since you've completed team assessment and you came in, you know, first place overall, do you have an itch to do it again? Or do you think it's going to be um, a different event next time? Like right now, I imagine it being a different event, but I'm real interested to see how they, uh, how this event evolves. I mean, we just did the beta class. And next year, it's going to be a little bit different and a little bit better. And two years from now, it's going to be a little bit better. And three years from now, it's going to be a little bit better. Um, I really don't see myself doing it again in the next, you know, two or three years. But it may progress into something that just piques my interest again. That's a good way of looking at it. I mean, looking back at the Gorak Tough events, the other events that Gorak has, has put on, I mean, the ones that they're running back in 2011, 2012 are way different than the ones they're running these days. And you don't really see that so much with, with road races, with 5Ks, with you know half marathons, with marathons, with 50 milers. I mean, it's still a marathon that you're running. A lot of the courses don't change even year over year over year. But uh, I mean, the way that Gorak evolves their events, I could easily see team assessment looking a bit different in five years, give or take, um, than what we saw during the beta. Oh, definitely. And especially if they start hosting it down in Jacksonville or someplace else, it could be a completely different event in the sand and the mountains. I mean, they, there's a lot they could do with this event that would make it completely different than this year. So yeah, it could definitely pique my interest again at some point. That's good to know. But un until then, it sounds like that, I mean, if there's a lot of other events out there that, that people can get after. So, I mean, it, it sounds like you won most of the events. Did you find, I will start with, you know, with Mark on this one. Did you find that winning the events gave, giving you the break, was that, you know, really beneficial to pushing forward and winning the next event? Or did you find that, you know, sometimes it wasn't all it was cracked up to be? No, I, you know, honestly, uh, it's that weird setting. 
and we were sticking to it. We didn't, we weren't like sprinting at, at any point to try to beat the other team and say we win, we won the bet. I think we just went at our pace that we initially set out to do, and whatever happened, happened. You know, there was there's time for the other team came sprinting by us to, to finish an event. We're like, okay, you guys can take this one. We'll do a penalty, not a big deal. And uh, we, we just accepted it, you know. And other times they were just better than us because they're strong, you know, they're a strong team. And we're just like, okay, you guys are gonna beat us because you're freaking savages and strong. So we'll uh, we'll take we'll chalk this one up. And you know, we we accepted our losses without killing ourselves to try to keep up or win it. You know what I mean? So we stuck to our pace, and that was it. I think that's a great strategy too, because. I mean, it can get so easy to get caught up in chasing down the team in front of you, especially if it's something that they're, you know, really strong at and it's one of your weaknesses and you can end up burning yourself out trying to get the win and it can put you in a, you know, in a, at a bigger disadvantage than if you had just gutted it out at the pace that you were comfortable in and doing it at. So that takes a lot of, uh, I guess, drive and commitment as an athlete to, uh, to recognize that. So awesome, jo- awesome job. Yeah, I, I think we had to, like, but you know, like when when they have more teams show up and they really make it something competitive, uh, it's gonna be carnage out there with teams trying to win each event. It's gonna be absolute. It, it'll be incredible to watch next year. I really hope everybody listening shows up and just battle royale the, the entire time. Yeah, yeah, I can see how. I mean, it would just be really, really fun to watch because it's like you said, it's gonna be teams out there getting it trying to get that win because even if they do something where like the first three teams you know get a break and the rest have to you know pay the penalties you're going to just see people out there just fighting fighting for those wins so one thing that i found interesting about team assessment and i I guess rereading the description it makes sense uh it wasn't like a points thing this wasn't a you know a, a basketball game or a football game or something where you know, your team won and won and won and racked up all these points. And then at the end of the event, they compare the points and say, oh, you know, team five's the winner. Uh, It was, you know, your wins were your breaks. And then at the end, I mean, it it seemed like it could have been anyone's game based on, you know, the, the way, uh, the way they're describing it, right. Where you're kind of on, on even footing and, um, that final scenario, you know, group of scenarios, the first team backs the the winner. So I'm I'm just curious what your thoughts are on that. If you like that idea, or if you um, kind of wish it was points based, or or something different like that, where you can kind of get a a lead going in and and have it compared at the end. So we can uh, start that one with Mark. Uh, I was going to push it to Mike because uh, he actually had asked that question during the event. But I I can go first. Uh, he so so I, you know that that was the whole it was one of the million scenarios we thought about before the event is how the hell are they going to grade this? And you know when you hear assessment, it's okay from the beginning to the end that we're getting points. How are we getting our points? So we you know in theory we're like all right after the PC test stuff gets by, like, points will start to accumulate somehow behind the scenes throughout everything we do. Well. You know, it it came down to, hey, there's a fear of the other team sandbagging and like saving everything to the end when it, when it really matters because they told us about that. They're like, well, you know, kind of you're just earning rest points right now and not real points. And so through your head, you're like, the other team's probably probably got this figured out and they're gonna sprint at the end. But so it, it, that part of it messes with you. Um, I guess moving forward, I would like more of individual accumulated point scenarios um i think that's a little more fair because i get to see teams sandbagging and losing the entire thing doing their penalties and then crushing the last culminated event and and winning the whole thing which i think would be an uproar if if it's a live feed and people are like well that was obviously what they did right you know the the team that gets last place every single time and then comes through and just kills it at the end I mean, this isn't a, a Hollywood movie. It's, so, yeah, I can I can see how that could turn into an issue. And that was that was something I was wondering, too, if it was, you know, real points or fake points like Shrewd Bucks or 
Gorklandia dollars. But yeah, so kicking kicking over to Mike. And so I've got two for you on this one because I, you know, just realized that I didn't skip over to you on the last one, which was with the rest breaks and the and winning the events. Did, so we'll start there real quick. Do you um did you find that the rest from winning was a you know a good enough payoff for winning or did you find that sometimes that could end up biting you a bit like what what's your uh, your thoughts on that one um there was a couple rest times where i thought it actually like may have hindered us a little bit some of those evolutions they kept real short so it, no matter who won you were only going to get like an extra minute or an extra two minutes um and when you're cold and wet um and you're sitting on the grass like two minutes wasn't it wasn't a reward because you're just you didn't have time to do anything you just had time to get cold and get stiff so it wasn't always a reward i mean the rest is always nice it's always appreciated appreciated but there were certain points where i'm like man like a 10 minute rest would have been great but this three minutes i just i just stiffened up sitting on the ground for the overall flow of the event though you know as we got further and further into the event and the events got longer you know for a for a three mile rock or a five mile rock and then when you finish, you got a 15 or a 20 minute rest, or maybe even a 30 minute rest while you're waiting for the other team. Those certainly added up. Those, those were beneficial. Yeah. It's, it's tough, right? I mean, I know you've, you both have done a single tough event, or I guess if I go, called it the Gork challenge back then, but one of the things that I see at a lot of them is there'll be a time, maybe six or seven hours in where the cadre will, you know, huddle everyone around and, and talk for a bit, you know, tell a story or two and. Uh, it's fun, but one of their goals is, you know, people get to check their feet, but they also get stiff. And I've noticed every single time that if you're not standing, sitting, you know, doing a couple squats that you get stiff in those little breaks. So I was, I wasn't too sure if that would swing one way or the other, if you guys would stiffen up from them or if it was a, if it truly was a, a treat. And then uh, jumping right into the next question. Mike, uh, the whole points versus no points, the fake dollars that you don't win, it's all rest money going into it. It sounds like you guys talked a bit on what you would do based on the different point scenarios, if they are points or no points. What are your thoughts behind all of that? I, I think it's kind of, it's a complicated question because um, if you were to score the event and you were to award points based on where you finished, um, you'd like to see it weighted equally, you know, throughout the event. And if they actually did have gateways where there was enough teams where they did cut teams, I don't know how they would keep the scoring fair. Like you finished fifth place at an early event. And so you got five points um, and then you won two later events, but the, you know, there was no teams between you and the team that eventually won. So, I mean, the scoring system would be very difficult to understand. The second part of it is, I guess it's good Facebook live when it's, you know, when it's a race, that's why there's playoffs in football. That's why there's, you know, that kind of stuff. That's why there's championship games. Um, I think it would be more fair if they had a scoring system. But at the end of the day, I mean, there's one Super Bowl being played in, in the NFL. And it doesn't matter what your records are before that. You only got to win that one game. So, I mean, I could see the argument on both sides. I personally would prefer if they kept score for the whole event. I think that would get, you know, a stronger effort out of all the teams the whole way. But the way it is, I can't argue with it. I mean, they were fair about it. And they told us about it, you know, towards the beginning of the event, how it was going to be. So I don't have any qualms with the way they ran it. I think Jason would argue that they were very fair. Very fair. <laughs> yeah, it's a tough one too, right? Because, I mean, you guys won a ton of the events. And so at some point, it probably would have gotten to, like, the other team couldn't be the champion. As long as you guys finish, you're the champions. So... It'd be interesting to see what kind of mind games that would play on on other teams. One thing that I thought was interesting with your your final interview, kind of with Jason, when the other team was still out there, uh, came you know trying to finish. When you guys were sat down in Jason's garage, I'm um, talking with him. Was he said something like that? You don't know what the culminating event was. You don't know the length, the amount of time that it could be, like a 50 meter dash. And that made me laugh because I can just imagine, you know, you go through all this 48 hour events and then they just line the four of you up and say, all right, first team to cross this line 50 meters away. Like you're the team assessment champions. That would be fun. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, I was, when he's, when that came out of my mouth, I was like, 
that or out of his mouth, I was just, I laughed because I was, I can just imagine the, the ridiculousness of it. But it, it also made me um, go the other way with, you know, what is the proper, like what is big enough for a, a culminating, you know, exercise, like clearly a 50 meter dash, like to the patches, right? They're sitting 50 meters away. And the first team to get there gets the ones they want. Like that's probably not enough for the end of team assessment. But what was your thoughts on the culminating exercise for team assessment? Was it enough? Was it was it too much? You know, where do, where does it fall in with what you were thinking? And we can start with you on Mark. I, I think it was. I think we understood what was building up. Uh, we didn't we didn't predict the scenario. So. When we were, you know, doing the pipes and setting them in, it was obvious. So, yeah, thanks. go back and get those. Uh, we're building our apparatus. Yep, we're going to use this, uh, you know, et cetera, for everything. So we knew that was a build up. We knew that was going to be, you know, used, uh, utilized later and probably culminate you know, <laughs> uh, But we didn't, I don't think we predicted the actual, like, op order and, um, you know the entire operation and mission that they they put us on to uh, put it all together, and and I think that was cool. I liked how they did that. Uh, it really put in perspective, uh, you know, a, a typical military uh, personnel day to day, how you deliver this, how you how you operate, and how you conduct a, a mission. I mean, that's, <laughs> it was train. You know, the time they allotted was dedicated to rehearsals and. You know, if you're in the military, you know, all right, this is what we train for. This is the mission. This is your rehearsal time. You go over it again and again and again. So it's muscle memory. And then you conduct your mission. Well, we didn't do rehearsals, but we did discuss what we were going to do. Uh, so in hindsight, I guess that was it. But uh, I, you know, I think we just, we went through it so fast. Uh, at the end of the day, I would say, I think we expect a little bit more, but I think it's hard to because there was only so much time left in the, the 48 hours so we knew we knew there's only a few hours that we we're going to be out there it wasn't unknown so that made it a little bit easier and correct me if i'm wrong but you probably would have been a little disappointed if it had been a 50 meter dash to the patches yeah that would oh, have been serious. <laughs> <laughs> i think i would have jumped off a bridge like going through all that and like losing in a 50 meter dash that would suck yeah Taking over to you, Mike, your thoughts on that final, you know, culminating experience with the, uh, with the team assessment. Was it what you expected? Was it more? Was it less? You know, where, where does it rank on what you were thinking was going to happen? I thought it was appropriate. I actually thought, um, like in my mind before the event started, I thought it was going to be, there was going to be much more PT and a lot less scenario. Um, I, I wasn't disappointed. I was kind of, I mean, it's crazy. Like once you get over kind of the silliness of it, it, it's still, it's a, it's a crap ton of work carrying that stuff around and building that stuff. Um, and you realize that as you're doing it, um, you know, the rolling in the mud is the rolling in the mud. I mean, that was just whatever it was. Um, but I thought it was appropriate. I thought the length of time that, uh, they dedicated to it was appropriate for the length of the event. I didn't think it was too short. I didn't think it was too long. It was, you know, right in the middle. Um, you know, like I said, the, the the props that they had and uh, they actually had their neighbor come out in full Afghan gear. I mean, that was pretty cool. Um, overall. Yeah. I was, I was real happy with the culminating event. That's awesome. And you, you jumped in on the last one, but I would, it sounds like you'd be have been pretty upset too, if it had been a 50 meter dash. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, it, even if it was only like a half hour evolution, I, I, I don't think that would have been appropriate. I think for a, a 48 hour event, you need something at least, you know, a culminating movement that's at least longer than all the other movements that you've had. So, I mean, the longest movement we had was probably, you know, three or four hours. So I thought that was appropriate to have a, a culminating movement that took three or four hours. Absolutely. Especially when they're judging it the way they are, right? Where it's not like you've earned a bunch of points in your bank up until this point. It's where this is the, you know, this is for it all. Yeah. But at that point, I mean, there, there was no like, well, you won three quarters of the events so you only have to take a quarter of the sandbags and the other team has to take three quarters you were starting with a fresh slate so you know as far as i was concerned the longer they made that the better it was for us it's a good way of looking at it so 
now that you've completed team assessment, we can start with Mike on this on this one since we're already over here. But do you have another event lined up? I mean, it sounds like these longer events are right in your wheelhouse, but it also sounds like you know you've got a, a wife and you've got a family that you like taking some time off from these to to enjoy with them because they're it's a huge commitment training for them. So, do you have your eyes set on another event in the future, or are you just kind of uh, keeping your email inbox open waiting for Mark to send you another email? Uh, my inbox is open. I usually do like one, I, I think of them as like my A races a year. I'll pick one event a year and I'll dedicate, you know, six or eight months of building and training for that. And then, I mean, I'll do, I'll do other events the rest of the year, but I won't be as focused as driven. If, you know, if, uh, if my son has a baseball game, I won't be up till, you know, 11 o'clock at the gym that night. Um, so I don't have anything scheduled for the rest of this calendar year. That's, anywhere near significant and then kicking over to you mark do you have anything on your calendar that you're training up for now that this is done anything that you're getting excited about i just had four goals in the beginning of the year uh uh next one is selection so that'll be uh my third thing but uh in a couple of days i'm doing this 30k 25 pound ruck run so but that's just, it's all complimentary to the big goals but you know that's that's coming up in a couple of days, but besides that, you know, selection is the, uh, the next big thing. That's exciting. I hope you, you know, I hope you do really well out there on your 30 K ruck run. I mean, you shared your, what was it? Your marathon time. Was it three forty eight? something absolutely insane like that with a 45 pound plate. So good luck out there on the, the 30 K. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, it's a good, it's a good event. It's uh, you have to carry canned goods, so it's all donated best. So it's uh, it'll be a good event. And if you you don't mind, uh, do you want to share the name of the event? I can throw it in the show notes and uh, maybe promote them a little bit. It sounds like a, a great event. Colorado is the Norwegian uh, trail ruck run. So I guess they do it all over the place. Uh, being in the being in the army, you can uh, you know it's one of those things you can earn as like. Uh, you know, points to to your your military resume, and you get a badge at the end. So it's uh, yeah, it's what is it, on the twenty fifth. So yeah, I got a couple of days. Yeah, that's coming up quick. And those are <laughs> those are points that actually matter, not the uh, Gorklandia fake points that don't count towards right, anything right. except for rest. Right. Yeah. Those count. No, those definitely. I mean, going over my notes, I think we've talk just a ton about this event you guys training up for it you know advice and tips there the entire event what you guys enjoyed about it um we'll start with you mark is there anything that i might have been missing is there anything about the event that you want to to talk about that we didn't talk about or are there any you know shout outs any things that you want to give to to anyone who helped you get here well uh first you know i i've only done you know one challenge and one light and uh, both of those are by invite uh, so I really want to kind of like direct this to that community uh, and that's why we want to do our uh, you know our gear list of you know that a video of, of what we had during the event and, and talk about it because we just really want to give back we couldn't really you know do the you know at the entire live feed and see all the comments that were going by and thank every person that was out there supporting us and sharing the team five uh so that was our kind of our kind of a uh, little give back to them and i i won't open the door for mike or speak on his behalf but definitely anybody that that was supporting us or not supporting us either way and has advice or uh you know suggestions or wants advice or suggestions uh just please feel free to reach out and we'll I'll do my best to uh, get back to you because I really want to get back into that community. I've, I've been away from it and uh, it, it just, it was nice to, to see there was so much support. Uh, and then, you know, it's just, there's, there's a couple of developing uh, uh, sponsors like the combat ready tape. Uh, they, we had a, you know, uh, a conversation with them recently and, you know, we told them about how they, they're, they're, their tape was amazing throughout the event and, and really helped out. So they're going to be helping us in the future. And, uh, you know, Honey Badger has always been there with me uh, and Carbo Pro. So just, you know, those companies have really just 
have, have been there, even though I'm, I'm limited on social media and probably don't promote them the way I should. So it's definitely a shout out to them and, and everybody else. Listening. Awesome. And I'll, you know, I'll give them links in the show notes. So you'll help, you'll help them out there. Yeah. Thank you. And you mentioned that you, have you already shot the video on the gear you brought or is that something you're planning on doing? Oh no, we did that the uh, day after. Uh, literally, we, we didn't take anything, anything out of our rucks. We took it, uh, took the rucks out of the car and opened it up and just showed everybody what was in it. Uh, that was on the tough page. I think we posted. We did that live, and you know, mind you, we're not we're not experts with that. And that was both our first time doing a live feed, so just bear with it. That's not professional grade. Uh, just what it is. Well, I've done, I've never done a live feed, so I'm guessing it's it's better than anything I would have put out. So. I'll, I'll link to that as well. So for anyone listening in the, that's already a member of the tough group, you can check that out. So thank you for doing that. Yeah. And then kicking over to you, Mike, you know, same question. Is there anything that we didn't talk about this event that you wanted to talk about that I might've missed or is that, I guess, and, or, so you can, you can do both. You don't have to choose. Are there any, you know, shout outs, any thanks you want to give to people who, or companies that, you know, help support you, get you here? Um, I guess one piece of uh, advice that wasn't mentioned was uh, if you are interested in doing selection, um, I think next year it's going to be back in the same place that Team Assessment was this year. So if you want to get a lay of the land, that might not be a bad uh, not be a bad opportunity to do so. Um, but no, I'd, other than that, I'd like to thank my family and uh, Jason Gusick, who owns the gym I go to. It's a West Side Barbell Gym. Um, you know, they're very supportive of me. Very supportive of me, and uh, you know, help me do what I need to do. That's perfect. Well, thank you both so much for taking, I mean, all this time out of your day. I know you're, you know, one of you's traveling pretty much across the country. And so this isn't, this isn't easy, but I just, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to both be on the call with me to talk about team assessment and, you know, how you guys got here and, and where, where you're going from it. So I, I really appreciate you two taking the time to do this. It's my pleasure. Yeah, no, thank you for having us. Thank you so much for listening to the All Day Rock Off podcast. This has been episode number 103. I had a ton of fun talking with Mark and Mike, a lot of really good information, and I really hope you enjoyed listening to it. If you want to get links to anything we talked about during the show, you can head on over to the show notes at alldayrockoff.com slash podcast slash episode dash 103. Otherwise, you can check out the show notes if you're listening to this in a podcast app. Mark and Mike did an incredible job out there at Team Assessment. It was a lot of fun to watch them on the live coverage. That live coverage is still up, so if you missed any of it, you can always go and check it out. Links to it in the show notes. And it was just truly fun to watch. If you want to support the All Day Rock Off podcast, there's a couple ways you can do that. You can always leave a review on Apple Podcasts or on our Facebook page. Just search for All Day Rock Off. That is an awesome zero-cost way to support the podcast i read all those reviews and they're truly truly appreciated the other option is to always buy something in the all day rock off online store you can visit that over at alldayrockoff.com store and the and the other newer option is you can support it on patreon that's at patreon.com slash all day rock off or there's a link in the show notes and that will get you access to some additional bonus content as a thank you for supporting that way. Again, thank you so much for all the incredible support. I really hope you enjoyed this interview with Mike and Mark, and I can't wait to see what Gorak has cooked up for team assessment for 2020. As always, don't forget, attitude is everything. Keep yours positive and drink hard, rock harder.